This is the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X 3D and it is the fastest gaming CPU right now. Also, we would like to say with utmost confidence, but the whole story isn't exactly that true. Or rather, it's kind of smeared with many things under the hood. While it might actually be the fastest gaming CPU right now, it does so at a price of 699 US dollars. To top that off, it isn't exactly that much faster either. We are talking just single digit percentages at best. But there is an upside. It certainly is very efficient, unlike anything else before it. So should you get one? Should you go out and buy one right now? For the first time with AMD, we are actually gonna say probably not. Not now anyways. For a start, we are pretty sure that most people would be comparing the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with its non-3D counterpart, the Ryzen 9 7950X. Now, just to refresh your memory, both this, the Ryzen 9 7950 X3D and the Ryzen 9 7950X, both of them retail for just 699 US dollars. Or rather not just, but anyways, while the competition, the Intel Core i9 13900K retails for 589 US dollars. But it is to be noted that you can pretty much get either of the other two, the 7950X or the 13900K for quite a bit less nowadays. So here comes the 7950X3D at 699 US dollars. What difference is there really? We would say that it boils down to three main things. 3D vCache itself, double the L3 cache for 144 megabytes of total cache and power efficiency of just 120 watt TDP. Honestly, that's pretty much it. All else is pretty much the same as the non-3D variant. So without further ado, let's just, well, jump straight into it. As of this review, these are the specifications of the rig that we are testing with, and these are the drivers that were used for both Ryzen and Radeon during testing. First up, we have Cinebench R23 as usual, and as you can tell, the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D basically sits right below the Ryzen 9 7950X. And it is also worth noting that it does sit right in between the Ryzen 9 7900X as well as the Core i9 13900K. With Blender, we tested the usual BMW scene as well as the classroom scene, and the results are pretty much in line with what we saw with Cinebench. The X3D chip sits just below the non-X3D variant, and is pretty much on par with that of the 13900K. We then have Firestrike, and just like before, we do advise to take our results with a slight grain of salt, as we simply do not have access to the latest and greatest CPUs and GPUs or even motherboard combos. So here we are testing with the Radeon RX 6800. So at the very least, we've managed to at least kind of keep the parameters pretty much the same as before with our testings from before. So it should still give you a rough, well, a good reference per se. But surprise, or perhaps of no surprise, the 7950X3D basically performed equally as good as the non-X3D variant, which also means it is a little ahead of Team Blue as well. Okay, so at this point, we would say that it's pretty clear that the Ryzen 9 7950X3D was never intended to be great at creative workloads. That's not the focus here. If you're more of a content creator, the standard Ryzen 9 7950X is still the way to go, or even the Core i9-13900K. Up to you. The main reason you would want to look at this X3D variant is simply because of gaming. So let's talk gaming. Due to hardware and inventory changes in the past few months, we weren't able to test a whole suite of games like we usually do, but at the very least, we did manage to run a few games that we already have the data on with pretty much the same parameters that were tested with the other chips. So let's first talk about those. We start with CSGO at 1080p. With the Radeon RX 6800, the 7950X3D manages to push just above 700 frames per second on average, giving a pretty healthy 5% increase over the 7900X and the standard 7900 that we tested before. Moving the resolution up to 1440p and we pretty much see the same percentage increase across the board. It goes without saying that the same can also be said when we are running full native 4K. 
As for Apex Legends, the difference is much less. No matter the resolution, be it at 1080p, 1440p, or even full 4K, the 7950X3D performed just about 2-3% to better across the board for both the average frame rate as well as the 1% low. We then come to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here, the performance is just similar across the board, across all three resolutions. The only big difference in our testing will be the fact that the 1% low at 1080p is quite a lot better with the X3D as compared to the non-X3D variant. Honestly though, we would say that part of the fact that the difference seems negligible with our testing and not akin to those shared by AMD themselves is simply because we do not have the latest and greatest GPU in our arsenal. We do not have the RTX 4090 nor the RX 7900 XTX. In addition, the drivers we use were provided by AMDs themselves pretty early and they aren't released to the public as of yet. So that might be some hiccups here and there that you might not experience once these cards these cards, these chips hit the stores. Now we also did go ahead and test the latest Modern Warfare 2 as well as the, well, kind of infamous Cyberpunk 2077 as of now. Now we weren't able to replicate the testing scenario with the other chips simply because we do not have the same testing parameters and even if we to provide them to you, you can't really get a good reference per se, but we'll simply leave the data here so that you, as the viewer, will be able to make cross-references to other videos or other reviews should you need to, or even to your own rig as well. Just to mention, all the frame rates shown here are without the use of upscaling technologies such as FSR or DLSS or XESS, so do take note. Lastly, we talk about temperatures, and to that extent, power efficiency. One interesting thing to note is that the TJ Maxx for the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D is actually 89 degrees Celsius, which is 6 degrees lower than the Ryzen 9 7950X. So, we do highly suggest investing in a really good air code tower or go with a 240mm or 360mm AIO liquid cooler. As mentioned, we do have ours hooked up to a 360mm AIO courtesy of ASUS and during full-on CPU intensive workloads such as Cinebench R23, you'll find that it can run up to 82 degrees Celsius quite frequently. If you're talking about gaming temperatures, well, they are even lower, so no worries there at all. You'll usually see just about 70 degrees Celsius or so. No worries. But the most amazing thing is power efficiency. The 7950X3D was able to dish out that amount of performance while drawing just about 130 watts. Compared to the 7950X, that's way lower. Compared to the Core i9-13900K, I think we needn't even bother. Kudos to AMD for this, seriously. So, all in all, where does this place the Ryzen 9 7950X3D? To be very honest, we don't really know. As of right now, with the launch price of $699, US the Ryzen 9 7950X3D is simply in a really tough spot. On one hand, you can have the standard Ryzen 9 7950X for much less nowadays, and that will not only perform better with creative workloads, the gaming performance is still pretty much equally as good in most gaming titles. And if you're looking at Team Blue, well, the Core i9-13900K retails for $589 US at launch, but it can be had for even less nowadays and that pretty much performs equally on par with the Ryzen 9 7950X and still is a great gaming chip, just like the 7950X 3D. So yeah, it's this is just in a really tough spot now. On the same topic, the Ryzen 9 7900X 3D and the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D are also going to be available. And if you're just solely looking for the utmost in gaming performance, those two chips, we are pretty sure they are no slouch either. If you're looking for the utmost for gaming and probably the best bang for your buck, the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D would be the chip to go for instead. On the other hand, if you really require all that extra cost to work with your creative assets, the standard Ryzen 9 7950X would probably be the better choice. And thus, we can only really say that the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, this might just be a tough sell. 
In any case, we hope that we were able to provide a little bit of insight. And yes, we understand that our testing and benchmarking practices aren't the most complete as compared to most other established reviewers, but we promise to do much more in the future and grow this segment. If you like what you just saw, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to us for more of such content. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and we'll be sure to take a look at it. Don't forget to follow all our social channels such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. And we'll see you in the next one. See ya!